Hi, my name is Ayushi, and I'll be talking about a machine learning project that I've done for uh, my data science course. So the aim of this project is to build a couple of different machine learning models and evaluate the predictions that result from these models. So the data set that we're given, the scenario of this whole project, is that we have data about customers and whether or not they churn um, in, in the telecommunication industry. So churn is a very important metric for businesses to know and understand because higher churn rates indicate that the customer is unsatisfied, which means that they are likely to leave the business, which means that that's not a good thing for the business. Um, whereas lower churn rates indicate that the customer is more satisfied, which means that they are less likely to leave the company um, and take their business elsewhere, which is good for the company. And that is why companies need to be able to understand um, churn, uh, you know, understand the current trends and predict what's going to happen in the future and whether or not they can tweak, um, you know, certain services of theirs or prices or anything like that in order to prevent customers leaving. Um, so in this assignment, uh, sorry, in this project brief, we are given four algorithms that we need to use. Um, so the first is the naive Bayes model. The second is logistic regression. The third is the random forest model. And the fourth is the XG boost. And I have split up my analysis into three stages of analysis. So the first one is we use each of these four models as is without any extra uh, work on it. The second uh, stage of analysis is using SMODI techniques to be able to address the imbalances in data. And the third stage of analysis is using the, um, sorry, using hyperparameter tuning to be able to optimize the model. Uh, and we only do this for the random forest model and the XG boost model. And I'll explain what SMODI and hyperparameter tuning is later on. And the four key metrics that we are looking for right now to evaluate the efficiency of these models are accuracy, precision, recall, and F1 score. Uh, and we are most interested in uh, looking at recall um, for each of these models and stages of analysis. Um, that is how, in the end, we are going to conclude one, uh, you know, the best kind of machine learning model that we're going to use. So the first step is to prepare the data. So I have already done exploratory data analysis for this same data set in the last project. Um, so I'm not going to repeat the EDA stuff here, but I will bring in the code for uh, cleaning up the data set. So I'm importing a bunch of packages. Uh, NumPy, Matplotlib, and Pandas are uh, essentials. We've got Seaborn for some plotting, um, a lot of scikit-learn packages, um, XGBoost, uh, uh, IMB-learn, um, and then suppressing warnings. <laughs> So the first thing that we do is we read in the CSV file using the pandas read underscore CSV method. And looking at the raw data, we've got, this is what it looks like, just the head of it. Um, so we've got customer ID, which looks like this. It's a string. Um, we've got gender, which is either male or female. Um, we've got whether or not the customer is a senior citizen. So zero is, no, they're not a senior citizen. One is, yes, they are a senior citizen. Um, whether or not they have a partner, so that's yes, no, uh, those are the only two options. Whether or not they have dependents, um, again, yes or no are the only options. Uh, tenure, so that is how long the customer has been with this company. Um, and I think this is in terms of months. So one month, 34 months, two months, et cetera. Um, we've, got, we've got phone service, which is either a yes or no got multiple lines. Um, I, I go through the options uh, for each of these in the next step, but this, this is essentially what the data looks like. So again, looking at each of the columns, um, I think there's about 21 columns and looking at the unique values. For, so for customer ID, we've got quite a lot of uh, unique um, values. So that's one per customer. Uh, for gender, it's either female or male. For senior citizen, it's either zero or one. So zero is no, they're not a senior citizen. 
Uh, one is yes, they are. Partner, yes or no. Again, dependents, no, yes. Tenure is the number of months that they've been with the company. So um, that is just a number. Uh, whether or not they have phone service, whether or not they have multiple lines, um, uh, the internet service, like the type of internet service that they have, uh, if they have online security, online backup, device protection, tech support, streaming TV, streaming movies, the type of contract that the customer is with, uh, paper, whether or not the customer has paperless billing, um, the payment method that they use, um, the monthly charges in dollars, so this is a float, and total charges, um, which includes, which can include all of these add-ons. Um, that's that's what the total is, and then whether or not the customer churned. So here we see that a couple of the, so the data is very inconsistent. Sometimes we've got a zero representing a no and a one representing a yes. Sometimes we've got yes or no as strings. Um, We've got these other options as well. And so the best idea here is to convert this data numeric, uh, make it make it numeric. And so what we do is label encoding. So we're going to replace all of the string values with something that is a number, just, just an integer. So we can easily replace binary um, choices like female and male with a zero one, a no or yes with a uh, one and zero respectively. Uh, but the others, the other options, which have like, you know, other things that are not binary, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to replace them with unique numbers so that later on, if we want to replace the data set with the original um, values, we can just go back and recode it. So this is what I do. Um, so it has all been replaced. Uh, making sure that the data type of that column of each column is is uh, appropriate. So, um, yeah. So we convert the object uh, data type columns to a numeric one, and so in the end, except for customer ID, everything else, like every other column, is either an integer or a float, as expected. So we're just going to drop the customer ID column because we don't really need that. And now we delve into the machine learning stuff. So the idea is that we create a X data set and a Y data set where X is every, every single column except for the target. So we've, we dropped customer ID here, so we're not going to have that, but um, the X uh, data set is going to is going to contain every single column except for the target column which is churn so we get all of these columns um here except for churn and the y data set is the uh target column which is churn and i decided to use an 80 percent training 20 percent uh testing data split um, and so that is what we're doing using scikit's uh, train test split method. So feeding in the X and Y data frames that I just created here, we obtain an X train, X test, Y train, and Y test data set. Um, and here I am just creating a couple of empty data frames to be able to store uh, the results from each stage of analysis. So this is the first stage of analysis that we're going to look at, which are just normal predictions out of the box uh, models. So the first one that we have is naive Bayes. So what we do is we use the Gaussian NB um, method. Uh, and you can see some information about it here. Uh, just going to call it NB. And then we fit the training data. So that's X train and Y train using that um, model. And finally, we feed in the test data X to be able to generate predictions uh, Y. So in this section, all I'm doing is I'm calculating the accuracy, the precision, recall, and F1 score, which are the four metrics that I said that I would be evaluating um, with the actual Y data, 
like what the churn column should be compared to what the model has predicted. And I also generate a confusion matrix. And this line over here, I am simply storing the results for each of these into its own data frame. I repeat the same process for logistic regression. So once again, I'm using the logistic regression model. Um, I fit it to the training data and I generate predictions. I get the uh, four metrics and I get the confusion matrix values. And once again, I append that to the same data frame um, for stage one of analysis. So the third model is random forest. So again, using the scikit uh, random forest regressor, re regressor model, um, fitting the data, predicting it, and um, getting the accuracy scores, uh, precision, recall, F1, confusion matrix data, again, from those predictions. Um, and then again, appending it to the data frame. Finally, we do the same again for XGBoost. So using the XGB um, method, um, we fit the data, predict it, get the, uh, you know, the, get the four metrics and the confusion matrix, and again, feeding it to the data frame. So now that we have trained our four machine learning models, we are going to compare these results or analyze them. So this is what the data frame looks like after I after we just finished uh, like feeding, recording the data to the data frame. So we've got the method, we've got the accuracies, the precision, recall, and F1. So this is some code where I display the confusion matrices of each of these four um, models. So the darker values are lower um, and the brighter values are higher. So we see that for the first stage of analysis, the naive Bayes um, model, it has the most varied confusion matrix, which means that it has a range of um, values, basically, uh, in terms of you know negatives and positives. Now, the other three models are very similar to each other in terms of proportions of um, positives and negatives again. So this is just something to keep in mind. So this is a little bit more code. Um, and here is a comparison of all four metrics that we just evaluated. So in terms of accuracy, we find that the logistic regression model um, has is, is the most accurate coming to about 81%, 82%, something like that. Um, in terms of precision, also the logistic regression is uh, the best in terms of precision. For recall, um, the naive base has the highest recall. And we are concerned with the recall metric, um, which tells us that for this stage of analysis, the naive base estimator is the best model to use or it's, it's what provided the best predictions for the data set. So so for the second stage of analysis, now we're gonna use what's called the SMODI technique. So we're gonna repeat the same process as above um, for the four algorithms, but this time we're gonna use what's known as SMODI, which stands for Synthetic Minority Oversampling Technique. And it's a method which deals with imbalances in the data set. So in a data set, you might have um, different classes of labels, and there might be a majority class of labels, and there might be a minority um, class of labels. And so what SMODI does is it oversamples the minority class, which leads to a, a slightly more balanced data set, which gives you a better idea of the features that that affect the predictions, basically. So once again, for applying the SMODI technique, I create an X and Y data set, um, dropping the customer ID and the churn columns for X and getting the churn for Y. I train it as normal using the 80%, 20% split. 
And um, for applying the SMODI technique, all you do is go SMODI and then, you know, you can have random state and resampling it on the, on the training data. And so now we use X-Res and Y-Res, which is the resample data uh, for um, training the models. So this is the same code as before, except instead of using X-Train and Y-Train, we're using X-Res and Y-Res, which is the resampled um, data. So yeah, fitting it to those, those um, resampled data, getting the predictions, getting the metrics and confusion matrix, and then um, appending the results to the data frame. Same thing again for logistic regression. So uh, using the logistic regression model, using um, X-Res and Y-Res to fit it, and generating the predictions, um, getting the metrics and confusion matrix, and uh, appending that to the data frame. Same thing again for random forest and XGB boost. So now we compare the results from uh, the this, this, this state of analysis, which used SMODI. And this is what the results look like. So um, if we look at the confusion matrices, this time we see that naive Bayes and logistic regression uh, have a little more variety in terms of the positives and negatives. However, random forest and XG boost are uh, roughly proportionate to each other in terms of um, positives and negatives. So again, we find that the naive Bayes model provided the least number of true negatives, um, only 638. So here we are comparing the four metrics. So looking at recall, we find that as before, the naive Bayes estimator has the highest recall, which indicates that it is the best model to use for this data set. Um, however, it is not as precise as the other models or as accurate. So the third stage of analysis is um, doing the predictions, but this time using what's known as hyperparameter tuning. And in the brief for the project, we're told that we should only use random forest and XG boost for um, this stage of analysis. So what hyperparameter tuning is that it for each model, there is a set of parameters that are fed into the model in order to be able to generate the predictions or fit the data. Um, Hyperparameter tuning is figuring out the best values for those parameters that should go in, which would optimize the model to generate the best possible predictions. So um, for the original random forest, model um, without the SMODI technique applied, we're going to get the parameters that are actually used in that model. So we see that there are a couple of parameters here, um, bootstrap, CCP alpha, criterion, max depth, max features, max leaf nodes, max samples, et cetera, uh, so on and so forth. So we have this giant dictionary of these um, parameters that were fed into the original model. So let's use a couple of these and estimate a couple of our own. So we use, for n estimators, we use a range of numbers. Um, we've got auto and square root for max features. Um, for max depth, again, we've got a range of numbers. Um, and then there's some other parameters for min samples split, min samples leaf, and uh, we've set bootstrap to true. So these are our estimated parameters for the random forest model. And now we're gonna, so we fit our model again for the random forest regressor, but before fitting the model to the training data, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a randomized search for the parameters. So what this function randomized search CV does is that it takes in the random forest model and it samples the um, parameter space uh, based randomly based on the parameter grid that we've provided. 
So, and, and there's a couple of other um, tuning options that could be adjusted. So we do that before sending it, before feeding it to, sorry, before feeding in the training data. And then the rest is just as normal. We get the predictions, then there's a bunch of warnings. Um, and then we get the, uh, the four metrics, the confusion matrix, and then finally uh, putting the results into its own data frame. Okay, so we got a set of parameters using the randomized search CV method, great. Um, but now what we can try to do is feed in the best parameters resulting from this randomized search CV and feed that into what's known as the grid search CV method and see if that gives us a, um, see if that gives us better metrics for the model. So grid search CV is another method that's uh, used for hyperparameter tuning. So here we're getting the best parameters from that previous um, hyperparameter tuning. And this is, these, these were the optimal parameters that were found previously. Um, we need to convert each of these values into a list uh, in order to feed it to the model. So that's what we're doing here in this um, chunk of code. So once again, we have a random forest regressor um, and before we feed it in, oh, sorry, before we fit it to the training data, we use grid search CV. Um, feed in that model, feed in the parameter values, and then there's a couple of other options. Um, getting the predictions, and finally getting the um, accuracy scores, precision, recall, F1, and the confusion matrix, and then appending it to the data frame. Okay, so we have just performed hyperparameter tuning on the first model, random forest, and now we're gonna repeat the same process again, but for the XGB, uh, XG boost uh, model. So here are some parameters that we're gonna estimate for, uh, for XG boost. Um, we use randomized search CV um, and fit that to the training data, generate the predictions, and generate the, so with, here we obtain the metrics, the confusion matrix, and again, append the results to a data frame. So from this randomized search CV parameter space, we're gonna feed this again um, and try and see if that gives us more optimal results. So these are the best, the most optimal parameters that were obtained from the randomized search CV method. And again, we convert each of the values into a list of its own. And uh, this time we're gonna use grid search CV and um, go ahead as normal, uh, you know, fitting predictions, metrics, confusion matrix, and adding the results to the data frame. Finally, we can compare the results from our hyperparameter tuning. So looking here, we find that there is actually no difference at all between the randomized search CV method and the grid search method for each of the um, models, which is interesting to know because we had expected that the results might change slightly, but um, I guess not. So again, we are looking at the confusion matrices for each of the two models. Um, and we see that there is a very high proportion of true negatives, which is a good thing. Um, this is some code that plots this. So this is looking at the four metrics for each of those two um, models. And Again, randomized search CV and grid search CV are the same for each of those two models. And so that's why the first two bars and the last two bars are equal to each other. And interestingly enough, we find that in terms of recall, both random forest and XG boost have very similar recall rates. Um, if we were to say which one's better, they're both they both performed similar, um, but in this case, uh, the better model would be the random forest model. So finally, what we're gonna do is also compare the three stages of analysis 
with each other for the random forest and XG boost models. So the red bar is the out of the box method, no SMODI. The yellow bar is with SMODI technique. And the blue bar is the hyperparameter tuning that we just did. So in terms of recall, which is the key metric that we're looking for here, we find that for both random forest and XG boost model, the SMODI technique gave a, a far better recall rate for both of those um, compared to the uh, out of the box non SMODI technique. Um, and it seems that in both cases, the hyperparameter tuning really did not add a lot of value to um, the predictions generated by the model. So in terms, so for this stage of analysis, I would conclude by saying that um, if, if we had to choose a technique for analyzing this data set, it would probably be the SMODI technique. Um, and for that, it would be the random forest if we only had these two options. So now we're gonna compare all the stages of analysis that we just did. So this first row over here is comparing the four key metrics. So accuracy, precision, recall, and F1 score um, for each of those four models. Um, the first bar on the left is without SMODI and the blue bar on the, the bars on the right um, are SMODI with the SMODI technique. So we find that the, um, the naive bays in general performed the best out of all uh, four models in terms of recall. And the SMODI versus non-SMODI, they were roughly similar to each other. And this is the graph that I just showed above, which is comparing the um, the two models, random forest and XG boost, with the three stages of analysis. So to conclude, I'm going to rank the best um, parameters that should uh, the best models that should be used for predicting churn values. So for the first stage of analysis, where we just use out of the box models. We didn't do any kind of hyperparameter tuning. We didn't do any kind of SMODI. For that, the naive Bayes estimator was the best in terms of recall. Then the XG boost, then the logistic regression. The random forest model performed the worst for that stage of analysis. For predictions using the SMODI technique, once again, the naive Bayes estimator was ranked highest in terms of recall. Um, and then we had logistic regression and random forest. And the worst performer, again, in terms of recall was the XG boost. So looking at hyperparameter tuning, which was the third stage of analysis, they both had very, very similar um, recall rates. But if they were to be ranked, um, the best performer would be the random forest. So overall, for this data set, I would highly recommend um, that the company, the telecommunications company should have a naive Bayes estimator um, using SMODI techniques to generate the predictions for their company. Thank you.